Hello and welcome back. In the previous section, in the previous video, we built a very cool app, Fun with Colors, where we set some automatic transitions to various colors. And in this uh, video, we are going to create something like this. We are going to create a basic carousal, not with images, but with text. Slide one, clicking on next will take it to slide two. Previous will take it to slide three, uh, one again, and so on. So building this is going to be very, very simple. It's going to be much more simpler than our previous videos challenge. You can even take this as a challenge, this component as a challenge itself, uh, if you want, because, but you can even follow along. It's, it's going to be very, very simple. And you're going to notice that it's going to be even more simpler than the previous video, because in the previous one, we had to set some automatic transitions, some, uh, some good amount of logic in our use effect blocks and so on. But in this one, we don't really need all those fancy stuff. So let's get let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a new folder, carousal. And inside that, I'm going to build a new component called carousal basic. Why I'm going to name it as carousal basic is because I want to keep the name carousal reserved for my final component, which is going to be the actual carousal that we are going to use in our final app. So I'm going to name this as carousal basic. I'm going to import react and use state, and I'm going to create a new functional component called carousal basic. That's it. And for now, let's also have uh, some static things. I'm going to have a div carousal uh, container. And inside this, I'm going to have two buttons. First one is going to be previous. Second one is going to be next. And in between them is going to be our div called slides in which we'll have our transitions. Uh, for now, let's just have a H3 where we're we'll, we going to call this as slides. That's it. And let's import it in our app component. Carousal basic. My Visual Studio code automatically imports it. If it does not do it for you, you will have to type this line out manually. OK. So we have our basic bare bones structure here. Now in the next step, let me add a quick styles. I want to show it uh, in a single line because usually you must have seen carousals are in a single row. The buttons are usually in a single row. It's, it's not really column wise, it's a row wise kind of thing. So let's just beautify it a little bit. I'm not going to really call it as beautify because we're not going to set any basic, any styles. It's going to be some just a basic positioning carousal basic dot CSS. And in my carousal basic dot CSS, I'm going to provide the style for carousal container. That was our first container class. I'm going to set the width as 100%. Then I'm going to set the display as flex. I love using flexbox. It's amazing if you want to control the positioning of elements. It's very, very useful. If you haven't, go check it out. It's my, I have a full flexbox tutorial. I'll link in the video's description. Uh, do watch it. You're going to love that. And you're going to you're going to learn flexbox from scratch. So I'm not going to really explain uh, what these styles are doing, but as you can see, it's it's pretty understandable from the, by just by reading it. So it's going to set the direction as row, and it's going to set space around. Uh, you can read more about it in your free time. But yeah, it's it's just a simple styling. That's it. And let's import this as well. Import dot slash carousal basic.css and as you see things are here working perfect so now we have our basic bare bones now we have the styles in place now we need to set up the actual logic so again let's import our use transition from react spring and let's also have the animated component imported perfect now just like previous one, we have to set an active index because we have three. Okay, even before that, what's our data? What is going to be our data of the slides? Let's make it kind of extensible instead of just defining a um, constant data. Let's have it read from its props. So I'm going to define the props as slides. And just in case we don't pass the props, we can have some default values as well. Slide one slide two and slide three. This is enough. That's it. And now I'm going to set some active index as well, some state which will keep track of active index zero, one or two. So I'm going to set 
our state active index comma set active index and the initial value of it is going to be zero obviously then i'm going to set my transitions uh, const transition is equal to use transition and inside my use transition i am going to provide the active value so we don't want to actually provide the whole slides what will happen if we provide the whole slides uh, active index actually not active so what do you think will happen if we provide the whole array of slides the the thing will the transitions will still apply but the thing is it will show slide one slide two slide three all three of them together we don't really want that we don't really need that we need one element at a time and that is why we are going to set the uh, styles we are going to set we are going to keep a watch on using so use transition the first first argument in the use transition hook is basically setting up a watch over some some kind of data it can be uh, your slides it can be anything it has to be an array so I'm just going to put a number uh, array which contains a number and that number is going to be the index of the slides of the currently shown slide and that is how we, ca we can easily kind of transition through and between the slides now setting up the styles just like in the previous one we're going to set some basic styles the from value is going to be opacity starting from zero and display starting from none that's it you can have you can go more uh, fancy in terms of style but i'll just keep it simple again opacity one and display block and while leaving we can have the same thing as from so it starts at zero goes to one and it leaves it leaves at zero once again so it's going to be a kind of a fade in fade out kind of a uh, i think transition simple now we need to actually set our transitions how to do that you already know that we've done it we have done this thousands of time in this course till now so let's do it once again on our own you can do it styles the first value inside this is going to be the styles and the second value is going to be our index or the item basically whatever item whatever the current item we are looping through in this dependency array or whatever array you call it right that's it so item or since it's an index we are i'm just going to call it an index that's it and we can actually return some value uh, i'm going to return a new animated div animated dot div with style style equal to dot 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 styles or you can simply keep it styles that's it and what's going to be our content inside it very simple i'm just going to keep it slides slides we have here of active index or the index that's it this is all we need and element type is invalid expected a string we have an array here let's see what array do we have here error sorry not array <laughs> cool uh, uh, uh so we have some error let's just try to fix uh, let's just try to have some simple things here instead of returning instead of having a proper function let's kind of keep this thing simple here and then see what's going on wrong i just like to whenever debugging i just like to remove the unnecessary things and now let's see element type is invalid expected a string for a built-in component or class but got undefined expected a string but got undefined and where is it coming from it's coming from uh, the call stack is kind of unreadable here let's see where is it it's coming from okay definitely it's it's it's, it's very <laughs> interesting because okay got it so it's animated dot div not dicks cool animated dot div this will work so things like this happen this can happen with you this can happen with anyone the whole point is i'm not going to edit this part out just like I debugged it, you'll also have to debug bugs here. A developer on an average can make many, many such mistakes in their workday. The only thing is you should know, you should learn how to fix them. Cool. 
so we have set some slide one so it's always on slide one but the clicking on next and previous doesn't really do anything why you already know because we haven't set the logic to update this active index and how can we update it very simple i'm just going to have a function called let's say next slide and inside my next slide i'm going to say set active index to active plus one just active plus one would also might also be five active index plus one of course it also might be fine but the problem is after two it will go to three and we don't really have a fourth element here so we have to apply a modulo operator slides dot length that's it and let's have uh, so on the previous no on the next button actually on click we need to pass next slide that's it and now things will work see and the same thing for previous slide same exact same logic active index minus one modulo slides dot length perfect and we need to set it here That's it, slide one, slide two, slide three. Uh, and this is not working. Why is it not working? Active index minus one. Oh, okay, got it. So it can go into negative as well. So let me do a quick thing, a quick hack. Let me just add slides dot length here. And this will make sure it will never go to minus. It's a simple mathematics, right? It's simple, very simple maths here. So we are done. We are done with the basic carousal. And in the next one, we are going to build a actual image carousal. If you want to see how it's going to look like, let me actually show you. This is going to look like this. Okay, it didn't compile. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, cool. There might be some <laughs> error with my other app. Anyhow, let's ignore it. So the whole point is you need to do exact same thing, but instead of slide, instead of this text you need to show images but where are you going to get those images from very simple you're going to get those images from this link that you have on screen let me present it you need to go to the lean programmer.com slash react sprints slash one slash assets dot r a r that's it you need to do that and then you can download uh, you'll have some assets like these just a second so just download them go to your carousal directory open the src inside the src let's create a new folder i'm going to create this folder as assets and let's paste it here let's extract it okay uh let's extract it here itself perfect uh we don't really need a new assets directory i'm just going to cut and paste everything here you got the idea basically we need to have an assets folder so we just beyond just besides our components we have an assets folder which will have all i think five images and some two vector files so you can use these five images to create your own carousal in the next video. You can take this as a challenge or you can directly skip on to the next video to see the implementation. Just a simple um, heads up that the implementation is going to be very, very simple. We are just going to replace a few lines and it's going to work. It's, it's basically instead of like this text here, we need to show some images here. That's it. As simple as that. And you'll be done. So. Try it out once. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.